In this video, we're going to take a look at working with a musician or band design and the color factory creating our design with monochrome bitmaps on a dark shirt. You can see how easy it is to set up design like this. We're going to take a look at setting up alternate designs for our client. Upselling, very important. How many businesses I can count that have taken our upselling teaching and really increased their sales? We've heard testimonies of companies that have doubled their business in less than a year using upselling. And the way we upsell is that we present different options to our client. Let's say the client says, I want a one color design and gives you a black and white image. Then you send them the design. You get one color, two color, three color design. And you can say, Here's what you asked for, but I prepared this for you. And this is only taking an extra few minutes working with the monochrome, dual tone, and the color factory. I'm going to do some work with the fashion factory here also to add some distress effect to the text, which you can't see because it's too small on the screen right now. And then you take these three designs to the client and we say, well, I put these extra designs for, together for you. Which one do you like better? It's very important that you ask them an open-ended question. An open-ended question is a question they're not going to say no to. Because once they say no, it's very hard to get past no. So you ask them an open-ended question. That's a sales technique for upselling. Which one do you like better? And obviously, 7 out of 10 are going to say they like this one better with the three colors. Because especially being that it's a musician, the kind of blue light look is very popular in that type of design. You say, well, this one will be an extra $2. Well, if they're printing 300 shirts, that's going to be $600 more for your business. You're going to set design up anyway, and the extra ink and work is not going to be so much for that extra $300. So you really want to think about upselling when you're working with the monochrome and these types of designs because they're going to say, that's a really cool design. Look at that. That's amazing um, compared to what they might have received from some competitors, etc. So you really want to think about presenting options and upselling to your customers. And I just wanted to touch on that because it can be so effective in making more money in your business and in your work. Go over here and we're going to start in on the design. So I'll just left click and select the image. I'm just going to duplicate this over here. I'll left click select one of the comps and I'll bring that over. Duplicate that. We'll bring that over here. And the first thing I want to do is take my black and white image and I'll go to my color factory, and I'm going to create an inverted monochrome. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want the white from the design to be printed on the black of the shirt and use the black of the shirt for the black. So we want the inverted because we've got a black and white that's going to go on a black. Once again, we'll be playing off the color of the shirt and the white in the black and white image. So we'll go click on inverted monochrome. The color factory will process that into an inverted monochrome image. Now this is black right now, but we'll take this left click, right click one time, put this on top of the t-shirt and go back to my color factory and I'm going to change the foreground color, not the background color. Change the foreground color. This is one of the things that's in the update that I'll be going over here in just a few minutes, but we'll go to the foreground color. We can take a look at that as a white and we can see there's the white look on the design. Now, you can imagine if you have a client sitting with you and you've just done that conversion and you're working on the design for them and you can go through and say, well, here's what it looked like as, say, a cyan on that. And we'll zoom in here so we can see what we're working with or go back over to the white and change that foreground. You can also work with the eyedropper. Left click, hold down, come around anywhere with the eyedropper and select a color. Take a look at a red. And the eyedropper works by left click, hold down, don't release, keep the left mouse button down. You can go anywhere and select any color. See a green. Even that looks pretty wild. Bring that down to a yellow. Bring that yellow up into a brighter yellow. Go into a cyan. So now we can manage the colors for our monochromes and duotones directly from within the color factory as opposed to having to use the Corel tools, which can get kind of confusing. But I'll go to a white for now for the first setup, and we'll select OK. Then I'm going to resize this, and I want to show you some tricks here with the text and working with the text. 
resize this to like probably right about there. We don't want to be too deep in the shirt. That's a good size right there. I'm going to pull back, zoom out. I'm going to get the text here. Bring this over and I'll position that. And what I just did there, I'll just, I'm actually going to just go ahead and left click, right click one time and duplicate that. That way it'll be on top of the shirt. There we go. And we'll bring the James Taylor over here. Resize that just a bit. Here's our black and white. Now, something interesting, when you're working with text, if you've got, like, if I go here to the Shape tool, I'm going to have the Text Character Properties bar here. And I'm just going to left-click, lasso these three nodes, and then move this text here. You can see this R in the rock works really nice if, if it's in line with the country, but it doesn't work very well when I took it and tucked it in here. And what I want to do is rotate this R. So it's in line with the country. So what I'll do is I'll select that node. I'll click off, click back on, select that node. Come up here to the character property bar and just put my cursor in the arrow. Now here's a trick for you. I'm going to go to my arrows on the keyboard and I'm going to just one, two, and maybe three. And you can see I'm rotating that character with the arrows on my keyboard. Go back down. One, two, three. One, two, three. And that's rotating in five degree increments. So I rotated that 15 degrees using the arrow key. You can also do that with the keys on or in the property bar for the character. Now there's the black and white setup. And I'm just going to resize this a little bit and I'll bring this right in so it looks like it's kind of tucked in to where he has the guitar cradle there with his arm right there. So there's setup number one, and I might want to bring this James Taylor text down just a little bit. And I could even move that. Go get my shape tool, select these nodes, and just move this right into there. Just kind of dial that in a little bit. And I'll probably just skew that up a little bit more and then bring that down into more like right there and this maybe i'll make this a little bit bigger bring it out to where kind of lines up with the side of the actual image there so that would be the black and white design and i can delete this we won't need that anymore we'll bring this over here and we'll set this up over here and then we're going to go ahead and duplicate this again and now we're going to go and add a second color for our upselling so I'll select both of these fonts, and I've got a font hiding down here. I'll select that and delete that. Select that, hold down shift, select that. I'm going to fill those with a black. Then I'm going to zoom in. Actually, at this point, I'll just right click and convert these to curves. Or I can just hit Control Q, but we'll go to Convert to Curves, and we'll left click hold down right click and then release that and then we'll fill that with a red so we got the background of the shirt black playing off the red now looking at my text here i can see and i always analyze my text when i'm converting i always take a look at it but i can see i have a group of five objects so i'm going to go here i'm going to go to ungroup with that selected and i have five objects selected i'm going to Go here, I'm in the Multiple Objects Properties, but I'm going to go to Weld. Now I've just got one curve for my text. Now I'm going to bring up my Fashion Factory and add a texture to that for my upsell. So I can point out to the client, look at this nice texture. So I'll bring the Fashion Factory up, and I'm going to go through some different files here and just browse through the previews, and you can get a larger preview. Now the Fashion Factory has... 2,500 textures and bitmap fills. They're different. Bitmap fills would be for, you know, filling objects, and textures are for your effects on things like text and graphics and distress and grunge and different things. I'm just going through here looking at different effects or textures that I want to apply to the image. I'm looking for something, I think probably something like this would look good. Halftone Cracks 1. Let's take a look at that. That looks pretty good. 
So I'll select Apply Texture as Transparency. And that will apply that. And I'll minimize this. Now I'm going to need to change my starting and ending point. So I'm going to go to the Transparency tool. And I'm going to go here to the starting point. Left click here, hold down, drag that back to zero. Go here to the ending point or the background of the transparency and apply that. And you can see that effect. Now, the interesting thing in working with transparencies and fashion factors, you can dial them into anything you want because from the transparency tool, you have this box. And these are high resolution textures. So they come in sort of big. And I can rotate that if I want to and really dial my effect or my grunge into exactly what I would like it to be. I could skew it, make it thinner, as you can see there. And I'll bring this back out here. So working with the color factory and the fashion factory, we can really do some wild effects. Now, coming up here to the James Taylor, this is two objects. I'm going to ungroup that and weld that also. Now, I want the same type of look for the grunge effect. So I'll go to effects, copy effect, and I'll go to lens from, and I'll click here, and I'll get the same effect in that text. So I've got a nice distress effect in the text and design. So that's design number two that we'll be able to present to the client. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to duplicate this again. Now here I'm going to add the color. So I'll select my monochrome bitmap, and then I'll copy that. I'm going to paste that back in. Then I'm going to go back to my color factory, and I'm going to go to foreground color. Actually, I want to move this first so you can see what I'm doing here. Go to the foreground color, and I'm going to change that to a blue. And I'll bring that into like a blue right about there I think would be good maybe we want to bring this up a little bit darker or a little bit lower we're going to do something here in just a minute but we'll select okay for that then we'll minimize this then I'm going to go to transparency I'm going to change my blend mode to soft light and now you can see that effect is starting to come in but I'm still keeping some of the white so I'll have two colors the white and the blue now if you want to enhance that you can see very little of it right now. If you go copy and paste, and every time you paste in, you'll see the blue being enhanced in the design. And you can see that now, how that looks. And that's a really nice blue look on that design. Now these actually are on top of the text. So I'd probably want to go left click here, lasso my text, and then just I'll just cut and paste it. Or I could just hit Control page up and that would bring it to the front of the page, but I'll just paste it back in. So now we've got design number three. So this is blue and white and red. That's your three color. There's your two color. There's your one color. And you can present these to the client for the upsell. Like I said, which one do you like better? Obviously, seven out of ten are going to go for the three color with the white, blue, and red. And you'll be able to upsell the client. And that's how easy those designs are to create working with the monochrome bitmaps and using some of the tricks with the blend modes. And you go through the blend modes and see what type of effects they create with the colors working the monochromes. You can create some really amazing looks with that. And I would suggest experimenting with that. Now, as far as our upgrade goes, what we're going to be doing is this will be free for current customers. So if you currently own the color factory, you'll get this for free. I imagine we're probably going to raise the price after we release this. Um, but let's take a look at what we're going to do here. We've got the color control now inside of the color factory. For example, this model duotone. I've got the background color, the foreground color, and set transparent background. That way I don't have to work with the tools in Corel. It makes it a lot easier to work with because even I get confused. Left click for the fill and vector and right click for the outline. But it's a reverse when you're dealing with the monochromes and the duotones. So here I could go to, let's say, the background color. And that would bring that up. Now I've got an eyedropper, left click, hold down. I won't get a color until I release. If I wanted a red background, release there. My mouse button and I'll have a red background. Bring that into a red shade and it'll start to work. 
It's a little too dark. Bring that up into the magentas. And we can see the change. And then we'll select OK. Then we go to the foreground color, which is a cyan. Take a look at that. It's something like a yellow. And we can really dial these looks in the way we want to, working with the color tools that are now going to be in the next update of the color factory. And I'll select OK. Then we're going to have the chromatic designer. Here we're going to have art assets. Now this is a work in pro progress. It'll probably be released within the next two or three weeks. This will actually be art, not chromatic presets. And there'll be a place where you can save your own monochrome style art and put it in categories, etc. So you can manage your own art. Because if you make conversions of things that you really like, you probably want to put them in a library with a catalog. So you've got to write your fingertips when you need them and want them. And we're actually in the process of developing all kinds of different art looks based on 3D modeling and things like that. Things we've never really seen before in the industry as far as clip art design assets are concerned. All based on working with this type of bitmap technology with the monochromes and the duotones. And the thing is, is you can take those, power clip them into a vector and you've got amazing design assets. And we're working very diligently on those. Then we'll have a shop. This will just bring up the advanced t-shirts website for now and that'll take just a second to load and actually what we'll have in the shop is different packs that you'll be able to order and add to your chromatic designer along with your own art and then we've got some other tools here for edit power clip and edit power clip because some of the art will be in the power clip so that's the upgrade that we're working i'm going to make it really easy to work you know here's the background color here's the foreground color set transparent background that's done for you go back to the background color and select OK. Just make it really easy. You'll notice that the color changes are live and dynamic. And you see, there's a, there's a really interesting look. You can take a look like this with the, let's say, the magenta. We'll bring this down to the magentas. Bring that hue right down into the magentas. Then we'll bring the magenta up a little bit. And then we'll select OK. And then we'll go to our foreground color. And you can see how easy this is to work with now. Bring this down into the reds for a pink type look to go with the magenta. And you really need to pay attention to contrast in your spectrum of color. Your light colors are yellow, green, cyan. Your dark colors are blue, magenta, and red. Interesting how that splits in threes. Go back, select OK, go back to my background color. Say I want to make that a little bit darker, bring some more contrast in there. I can do that all working with the tools from directly within the color factory. Now this update will be out in about two or three weeks. Once again, it'll be free for current users, but I do believe with the new functionality, the chromatic designer, etc., we'll probably double the price when we release the update. So if it's something you're thinking about, it's probably something you want to get into now if you want to save some money. Go ahead and wrap here, and we'll see you in our next video.